Hey there guys, my name is Will, welcome to the video. In this particular video, I want to kick off as part of the Managing Automation series. What I want to do is look at automation in the realms of emails. In my other video, I spoke about automation within the realms of Telegram uh, and that, that course, that particular part of the Managing Automation series is still carrying on. But just to diversify things a little bit, we're going to also be looking at emails. In this particular video, we're going to be covering how to um, manage, send and receive your inbox within a Win32 application. And this will serve as a foundation in our understanding in terms of how to actually automate email posts to mailing lists. So without much further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so I'm back. And so first things first, what you want to do is to add this particular namespace, which is, and let me see if you can see it. Yeah, it's the Microsoft Office Interrupt Outlook namespace, which you can just add as a reference. Um, I think it's a .NET assembly, so you don't have to worry about going to the NuGet, NuGet package store for this one. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the application. Now, just as a heads up, the user interface is nothing amazing. I actually wrote this qu a number of years ago, <laughs> quite a while it's been, and I'm revisiting the application because I think you may find value in um, kind of the concept behind this email client widget that I was working on back in the days. And um, so yeah, anyway, that's enough of the history lesson. <laughs> so anyway, this is the user interface. It's very functional, but uh, it's not very flashy. So anyway, um, for obvious reasons, you're not going to see the credentials that I'm going to enter themselves. But once you enter the login and password, which obviously shouldn't be just out here in plain text, um, but just to give you an idea, I suppose I'm not changing it yet, just so you can see what's going on. You hit tools and login. Simple stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't have any resize options for the window here, like maximize and restore, because uh, I didn't design this um, user interface very responsively. So I didn't want, to, I wanted to limit the resource options. But anyway, enough of the UI. As you can see, I have a snippet of my inbox here has been imported from my Outlook. And uh, there's a few things I can go into here regarding the fact that the whole inbox isn't loaded. I think I put a limit because my inbox, I, I will admit my inbox is really large. Uh, I'm really bad opening emails. So, um, I think when I did this, I limited it to a discrete number because it took too long to load everything. Um, so for example, let's just open this email. Click on the email. And uh, this is quite an old one, I think. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's actually recent. I'm, not, I'm actually not 100% sure. <laughs> but it, it's just like, a, you know, one of those kind of uh, recruiter emails you get every now and then. And if you scroll, you can scroll down and you can scroll the whole email. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. But as you can see, uh, the email inbox has loaded and uh, you basically have um, the power of the interop uh, with Outlook in order to, you know, do whatever you need to do with regards to Outlook emails in the Win32 environment uh, in terms of development uh, for this particular application server we're doing. So let's have a look at how this is achieved. Okay, so once you've imported the namespace, you would you may have noticed that I went to tools and I went to login to to log in. There's a little sub menu there. If I scroll down now, the code's quite messy, but hopefully you can still um, kind of understand what's going on as I guide you through. That login button um, calls a function called generate mail. And um, yeah, so when when generate mail is fired, the f one of the first things I do, I have a static class called credentials. I'm just going to go to it now, and it holds a public static string. It's it's not the best. I I'll be honest with you, it's really not the best. But for now, I'm not going to change this, um, for the sake of time. And I guess the clarity of the of the walkthrough, it helps it so that you can see what's going on. It's a bit more plain. Really, it should be a public property protecting a private string or a protected string or something. But for now, we have a public string login, public static string password. We access these members here, and I assign them the value of the text box. 
this should really be a password box if you can get password password boxes in WPF. I'm not too sure. I know UWP has password boxes. I'm not too sure if WPF has password boxes, but anyway. You need to somehow get the user login credentials and place them and store them somewhere in, in memory, in the application, depending on what you're doing. Now, I have a var, mails, and I have a class called email processor. And in email processor, this is another class that I created, so you can name this anything you need. Uh, I have a function called read mail items. Now, this is quite a important function. And you'll notice that read mail items is a static list of Outlook emails. And I'm just going to have a look at what Outlook emails is. Okay, so the way I structured this, it's a quite an involved process. So I will break down what I'm doing fairly steadily so that hopefully you can follow what's going on. So you want to then make sure you have a class that you create. I call it Outlook Emails. And very simply, very simply um, stores inbound email as a string, email subject as a string, and email body as a string. These are properties. These are public properties. They really should be accessing private fields, but I probably got quite lazy. So these are just kept as public properties. And if I go back... So I am passing, or rather, I'm defining this function as a list of Outlook emails. And this Outlook emails, um, just to refresh you again, it is a class which simply holds three types of strings, inbound email, email subject, and email body. So that's something to kind of remember. Now, you want to call Microsoft Office Interrupt Outlook Application. And you want to name this class, I call the Outlook application, and I've set it to null. Now, Mappy folder, I think Mappy is a email protocol. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, you can do a little bit of research as to what some of these things are. But what you want to do, you want to call this Mappy folder class. Uh, I've called it inbox folder, and I've set it to null. And I have another one, spam folder. I think I was just experimenting, but what you really want is just, you just need one for the inbox, really. But I have one for the spam folder, and that's assigned to note. The next, what you want to do is call Microsoft Office Interrupt Outlook Items. And then I've gone ahead and called this class Mail Items, an instance of the class, and I've assigned it to know. And then I have a list of Outlook emails. So again, a list of Outlook emails, and it's called List Email Details. And this is a list in this within the scope of this function, and I've, I've instantiated it here. And then I have an object instance or an instance of the Outlook emails class called email details. So again, this is not the most optimized framework, but again, if you do follow this kind of structure, it will definitely give you an idea as to how to um, deal with this, um, this topic of emails uh, within Win32. So I have a try here, a try block, and I have an Outlook application, which I believe I made up here, if you remember from before, just now. Outlook application is assigned a new Microsoft Office Intro Outlook application, and then I have an Outlook namespace, which, where did I create this? I'm gonna double check that, check that now. Okay, so I have a public, or should I say, a, a um, global private static namespace called Outlook namespace, and I've assigned it to null. So I have a few global set in the email processor class, which is where we're in right now, and Outlook namespace is in a global scope. So you want to um, consider that. So Outlook namespace is assigned Outlook application dot get namespace, and this semantic we pass is Mappy. And then what we want to do is Outlook namespace log on, and then this is the this is the main function that allows us to log in with the credentials, and then so we log in with the credentials passed login and password, and there's two overloads at the end, um, show dialog and new session, which I've just set to true for both. 
and there's a few other things you got to do here i won't go line by line for this but as you can see sync object is a sync object uh -huh, um it's a sync object class instance and you just set some of its members as you can see here i have a bool called syncing is assigned to true which can be used as a flag to indicate whether your email has been synchronized or not uh, failing this, message box show is inbox synchronization failed. And then once that's all done, we have here Outlook namespace send and receive, and um, the show process dialog is set to true, and this allows for sending and receiving of emails. And then going towards the end of the function. Retrieve specified folders. So inbox folder is being assigned an Outlook namespace. Remember, we made that before above in global scope. Get default folder, and then we're specifying the inbox. And then um, similarly, spam folder is being assigned is being assigned Outlook namespace. Get default folder, and then we're passing as an overload the junk mail folder. Mail items is assigned to the items of the spam folder. And I was just thinking now, that's probably why I only had like 14 items. It's probably because I'm actually looking in the spam folder rather than looking in my main inbox. That's why I probably have only like 14 items there. Because <laughs> I'm just looking ahead at this code. So what I opted to do here was to, because I think what happened is I have so much in my main inbox, I just said, okay, I'm going to just load my spam box. So what I did is I, I loaded my spam box into the mail items, email details, uh, which is a local variable. Let me see where it's defined. Up here earlier, Outlook emails instance, email details, which if you remember holds, I think it was a subject body. Let's have a quick look. Email subject, email body and inbound email. So I guess that's the, I'm not too sure what that holds, but it's there. I have to actually maybe double check that. I'm sure it's being used. Anyway, uh, where were we? And I am looping through mail items, which is my spam folder, and um, via a for each loop. And then email details is being assigned a new instance. And then inbound, remember that's an Outlook emails class instance. And then email details dot inbound email, which is a member of, of that class, and we're assigning it item sender email address, and then um, email details dot email subject is equal to item subject and an item body respectively. So here we're actually storing the information pertaining to the emails in the spam folder within this um, Outlook emails class. So this is going to be holding. If I were to debug this uh, after running the program, you'd see that it would hold um, the, say, the email subject of a particular spam email item and respect it for all the other members here. And then finally, you want to release com object. And then you pass as a parameter the Outlook application mail items, Outlook namespace, inbox folder, and item in this case. Let's just have a look at and inspect the overloads. It's really hard to read that. <laughs> it's really hard and I can't really zoom in on the IntelliSense, unfortunately. And finally here, on the finally block, release com object, very similarly. Outlook application, mail items, Outlook namespace, inbox folder, and null. And then I return list of email details. Okay, and this refresh mail box is simply just a, um, it just attempts to retrieve the latest mail if anything happened. And I think that's done via a refresh button on the user interface. So I'm not going to really go through all of this. Release com object is quite, um, is, is necessary. It's a little bit boilerplate-y, so I'm not going to really go through it, but it is necessary uh, for what we're doing. So it goes down here. If you guys want a reference to some of the source code, 
uh, I am actually on my website. I'm going to be uploading the course there and it's going to go into a little bit more detail. I'm aiming to have like an article or articles regarding this topic alongside the videos as well. So if you do want snippets of the code, if you do want more of a deeper insight how to construct this, YouTube is a place where I can go through this at a brisk pace. But if you want a little bit more of an in-depth look, definitely stay tuned because I am building the course on the website. So uh, I'll leave link a link in the description just in case you want to stay tuned for that. So we're going to go back to the main window. So all of that fun action <laughs> happens here. Email processor read mail items when we call the function. And then now I update the global reference to the mailbox. So this now would be populated with the spam folder uh, mails. And then I make I import it into global scope here via the this inbox, which is a global object. And I assign it the value of mails. I initialize the inbox list. So I have lists to hold um, the inbox um, inbox items. So in these collections for respectively the subject, the inbox body and the inbox buttons. And the inbox button is just a reference. It's just basically the user interface. So I have a stack panel, as you may have noticed uh, in the user interface and the stack panel was holding buttons that I clicked and it would expand um, the um, body of the email. And this is all user interface stuff. So it's not extremely, like, should I say strictly necessary that you follow it like the way I did it. Your user interface might be quite different. And here I'm just populating the GUI. This is another video in its own right uh, because um, I'm basically constructing the GUI programmatically. So I'm not really going to go through this. I wanted to really show you the email processor stuff, I, I guess. And this is just controlling some of the animation, which you didn't see. It was off screen at the time. And uh, that actually brings us, well, I could go through inbox item open, but it will just be me kind of regurgitating the code, which is already here. I'll just leave it on the screen so you can see it for a brief second. It won't make much sense. So, but again, this is just a very light, brief walkthrough of what's going on. The main thing was that email processor class. Um, and I will leave references in the description eventually because uh, I, I just believe that this interop, this Microsoft Office interop, is quite an involved namespace. So a guided walkthrough would be very helpful in the form of not just a video like this, but also perhaps in the form of like some articles written as well. Um, so definitely look out for that. And that this very short brief insight brings us to the end of this particular part of the video uh, in the next part i'm going to be talking about i'm going to be looking more into automation in subsequent videos in this series more in terms of automating emails sending emails composing emails so thanks very much for watching i bid you all a great day stay safe and have a great day bye bye